everyone, and welcome to your daily Barnes Takeout. I am Carl Walsh. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Research, Interpretation, and Education at the Barnes. And today, I wanted to have a look at a very kind of curious figurine that we have in our collection, which is in this cabinet against the north wall of room 16. And if we zoom in on this cabinet, you can see that there are lots of representations of the human body. We have lots of terracotta figurines from ancient Greece. We have um, some other smaller figurines from possibly from the ancient Near East and these little bone and ivory Buddhist statues. And then we've got kind of representations of people on Greek ceramics and stone sculpture and relief sculpture. And the figurine that we're looking at today come, is right here on the bottom shelf. And the reason I wanted to talk about this figurine today is because it's one of the few objects outside of the Egyptian objects that we have in the collection that dates to the Bronze Age period. And this little figurine comes from Bronze Age Cyprus, particularly from the late Bronze Age period, roughly kind of 1500 to 1200 BC. And although Cyprus is a really big island in the Mediterranean, we still don't really fully understand a lot of things about ancient Cypriot society, how it was organized politically and socially, and things like what their religious beliefs were. And so this figurine we're looking at today is an example of a type of Cypriot object that currently we don't know very much about and its role and function is very debated. So I thought this would be an interesting subject for us to have a look at today. So having a look at our figurine, you can see that it's made out of clay and that it's handmade, which is quite clear through kind of the asymmet uh, asymmetrical features and the very kind of rough incisions that decorate uh, the figurine. Um, its form is clearly female. You can see that it has a very kind of exaggerated hip area and then it's got this pubic triangle which is decorated with all these hatched incisions and then she has two kind of small conical breasts. And the general shape of this figurine is kind of diamond. It's got this kind of wide hips in the middle, which tapers down to very thin little legs and feet, and then tapers upwards to this chest area where we have more decorations that kind of might be belts and garments and maybe some jewelry around the neck. Um, and we have these two arms that are just kind of clasped against the chest and the fingers here are just literally incisions uh, into the clay to suggest fingers. And then we got at the top this very kind of strange head which is got this kind of pinched face and it's pinched literally because it was probably made by pinching the clay together to create this kind of almost beak looking face which lends to the term that archaeologists call this we call these bird faced goddesses and it's just because the face kind of looks like a bird not that we actually think this is a kind of bird headed deity or anthropomorphic figure um, so it's got this very kind of pinched face with these two sets of eyes which were made from kind of small bits of clay that have been attached separately and then we have these massive ears or maybe it could be a headdress of some kind and it has these two little perforations in each side and we have lots of other examples of these figurines and in some a lot of the cases they actually have separately made little hoop earrings which are placed within these perforations. So these are probably originally had um, some kind of like earring attached to them too. So the form of this figurine is very interesting just because it is obviously some kind of female figure, but who exactly it represents is really quite a mystery to us at the moment. Many archaeologists think that this is some kind of goddess 
uh, perhaps a fertility goddess, given the kind of the emphasis on the female genitalia and kind of the breasts. And in some cases, some of these figurines also have little infants uh, who are kind of cradled in these arms against the chest. So people have kind of suggested that these, you know, sexual features and these kind of links to motherhood might suggest that it's some kind of fertility goddess. And others have pointed out that this kind of form, this nude form, links it as well to Near Eastern goddesses. So goddesses like Astarte and Ishtar, who are worshipped in the Levant, which is the area of uh, Syria-Palestine, just across the water from Cyprus um, and in Mesopotamia, um, who is a goddess of sexuality and warfare. So maybe our little figurine here is the result of Cypriot peoples adopting and kind of hybridizing Near Eastern goddesses to make them kind of Cypriot go goddesses um, on Cyprus. But, and I, and I have to kind of agree with this, I think others have pointed out that we really don't know very much about Cypriot religion at all from this period. And just because we kind of see a nude female form, maybe we shouldn't always just go to an interpretation of seeing this as a fertility goddess. People make images of the nude human body for a variety of different reasons. And you can actually see this in the cabinet that this figurine is in. Um, lots of nude figures and, and nudity is always kind of very interpret interpretable, like it has very a lot of different uses and functions. So we kind of had to be careful. And sometimes I think archaeologists and art historians um, can be guilty of labeling objects like this that we don't know very much about and don't know how to interpret very well as something kind of religious or ritual or cultic, which is kind of code for we don't really know how this was used or what it is. So it's something to do with supernatural forces or and something that we don't really kind of understand. So currently it's really hard to say who our figurine represents here and what exactly the function of it was. So maybe instead we could think of other ways of interpreting it. And some people have kind of suggested looking at these from a more kind of personal level. And, and I really like this interpretation. And so for instance, kind of thinking about where these figurines are usually found. They're usually found in houses and in burials. So that kind of straight away suggests that they are maybe something that is a little bit more of a kind of a personal object that has a kind of value to an individual that was used in life, so used in the household, and then taken with them into death, so taken with them into the burial. And looking at the form of them as well, the back of these figurines are often not decorated at all. So they're just kind of smooth. And the shape of them in this kind of diamond form kind of actually lends them to being held in the hands quite well. Um, and if you actually look at this figurine as well, you'll notice that in the gallery it's presented on the stand standing up, but actually it would never be able to achieve this position in real life. Um, the feet are just way too small and it would just fall over. So it must have been kind of displayed or stored on its back or kind of leaning against something. But again, I think it's probably something that is meant to be held. And having something kind of small that's portable um, really lends it to being something that's kind of more connected to a person because you can take it around with you and you can hold it and you can interact with it um, rather than just, just kind of looking at it. And another thing that's kind of interesting about these figurines is the this kind of strange ears slash headdress at the top um, that often have these earrings. And at this time in Cyprus, there is a lot of production of bronze earrings, and they seem to be very kind of standardized in their weight, which almost kind of lends to them being a kind of currency or maybe a kind of a sign of personal wealth and status that is connected to the value of and weight of bronze. So maybe this is more connected with expressing social status in society through kind of the wearing of jewelry and the wearing of these types of earrings. And I think this kind of allows us to be a little bit more flexible in how we interpret pieces of art like this, rather than just taking the nude female form and saying it's something connected to sex and fertility, and instead thinking about how these things can be used in other ways. Um, so 
ultimately, we don't really know how this was used. Um, and so next time that you're in the barns, I actually really sit, encourage you to go and have a look at this figurine and have a think about what your own interpretations of this might be, um, which might help to solve the mystery of what these little figurines represent and what they were used for. So thank you for watching this Barnes Takeout. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel to get your daily serving of art. And please leave a comment. We really enjoy reading and responding to these. So please take care and stay safe. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.